In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create smooth animations in Scratch. The very first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and just delete whatever's in your project by default. The way we're going to create animations is using something called a sprite sheet. So if you haven't seen a sprite sheet before, it's something, it looks sort of like this. Um, this one's a little, a little blurry. But the idea is you have a bunch of different images of characters, you have a bunch of different costumes, and you're going to switch between these costumes really quickly to make the illusion of her like using her knife, or for instance making the illusion of, of, of your sprite running as it cycles over all these different costumes. The sprites that I'm using are from a site called GameArt2D.com, and they have a, a freebies, they have some free sprites that you can use. I have a link to that in the description of the video, so if you want to use the same sprites or one of their sets of sprites, go ahead and grab that from the description of this video. I'm using this one, I'm using the Adventure Girl one, and you want to go ahead and download the pack, their free download right here. So click download, and it's going to download a file called Adventure Girl. So now if you go to your downloads folder, which should be right here on the right, and right click on that zipped folder Adventure Girl and click extract all, and click extract, what it should give you is a folder containing all of the files for Adventure Girl, all of the different costumes you can use. So if you open that folder, you'll see something like this of all those different costumes for our sprite. So now what we want to do is go ahead and import those into Scratch so that we can do our animation. So if I go to Scratch, I can mouse over, I want to create a new sprite, and I'm just going to click Paint first because we just need a blank sprite to start with. And then we're going to import all the costumes. So now that we have this blank sprite one costume, we're going to go over here to choose a costume, and we're going to click Upload a Costume. And we're going to select this first one, so click on it so it's blue and selected, and then scroll down all the way to the bottom and hold down the Shift key and click on this last one, and that should select all of them at once, and then click Open. And then Scratch is going to import each one of those costumes into our, into our game so that we can use them and we can code them. You can go ahead now and delete this first empty costume. And there we go, we have all of the different sprites we can use. And so the way we're going to do this animation, the way you make animation at always, is you basically take, let's say we're making her run, and so we're going to go from this first run animation, we're going to cycle over all these different runs very quickly and it's going to make the illusion of her looking like she's running on the screen. So the first step of that is just doing basic controls. So I'm going to go ahead and go to events, grab a when we click start, and put in a forever loop. And then inside of this forever loop, we're going to check if our player is touching a certain key. So we'll go to uh, if, and then we'll say if the player is touching the, we'll start with that, the D key, that'll work. So if the player is touching the D key, we want to start cycling over all of our animations to make her look like she's running. So the easiest way to do that is to go up to looks and just say next costume. Of course, now if I click start and I try this, she's going to cycle over not just her running costumes, but all of her costumes. So instead of letting her cycle over every single costume whenever I press the key, we want her to just cycle over a very specific set of them. Now, if we look through all of her costumes, you can see her first run animation is this one. It's called run one and it happens, it's costume number 38. You can see right there, costume number 38. And all the way from costume 38 to... 45 is her running. So all the way from run 1 to run 8, which are costume number 38 to 45, those are her running animations. So what we want to do is check if we're less than 38. So if we have a number, a costume number less than 38, less than her first running animation, we're going to switch her to her first running animation. And then she, we're going to have her go to the next costume, so switch over each one of these animations, until we go past 45. If we're after 45, we'll stop it and we'll have it come right back around and set her back to 38. So it just keeps going in this loop of her running over and over again until we let go of the D key. So in the code, what I want to do is I want to say we need if it's if her costume number, so if her costume number is less than 38, less than the first costume, or, or if her costume number is greater than 45, the last costume number for her running animation. So if her costume number is less than 38 or greater than 45, then we want to switch her back to her first running costume because it means that she's not in the running animations, right? If her costume is less than 38, it means she's in a costume that's not running. If her costume number is greater than 45, if it's greater than her last costume, then she's onto one of these other animations. And so we're going to set her right back to her first animation, this run one. So if that's true, then we will switch her costume back to run one. There we go. And so now when I click start and I press D, we see she just cycles over the costumes for her running animation. The, the costumes that are between 38 and 45 are all her running animations. 
when we get to the end of that, when we get to 45, when we get to 46, it sets it back to the first costume animation. We want her to be able to run both directions though, so we also need her to run when we press the other key, the A key. So what I'm going to do is, usually I don't, you want to be careful when you duplicate things, but I'm going to duplicate this and put it, make sure it's underneath the other one. And we're going to say this one's going to be when we press A, because we can also go to the left. So now, right now, this just does it when I press A or D, both times she runs. Uh, we need to change this up a little bit. We want her to face the other direction for one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set her rotation style to left-right so that she flips instead of rotating all around. We want her to be able to just flip. And then I'm going to say that when we are pressing the D key, when we're going right, we want her to point right. So point in direction, and the direction we want to point is that way, right, 90 degrees. Uh, if I'm pressing the A key, I want to point the opposite direction. So point in direction, and then we're going to choose to the left, because when we're pressing A, we want her to go left. And now if I start this again, then she can turn directions. If I press A, she goes left. If I press D, she goes to the right. The last thing I want to do here for her basic animations is I don't like it that when we stop, we're just stuck here. This looks very weird. She's like in the middle of running. I want her to go switch to a set of idle animations because we have a set of idle animations for her sort of standing still. Her head bobs up and down a little bit and she stands still. And it makes it look like the game is still alive even when I'm not pressing buttons. So what we want to say is if we aren't touching either of these keys, so if we are not touching, so if not key pressed A and, oops, <laughs> If not key pressed A and not key pressed D, then, then what do we want to happen? We want her to cycle through all of her standing still animations. And those animations, they're her idle animations, they start at number 11 and they end at number 20 right here. So between 11 and 20 is what we want those animations to cycle over. So we're going to do just like we did up here, we're going to say... We're going to grab a next costume. We're going to switch to the next costume. But we're going to do the same thing we did here. We're going to say if her costume number is less than 11, that's her first one for idle, or if it's greater than 20, which is her last one for idle, then we're going to switch it back to the very first idle animation, idle one. So that way, if we get too far, it puts us back to that first costume. So now if I click start, there's her idle animation. If I run, it goes to the running animations. And if I'm pressing nothing, then she just stands still. Now, I specifically mentioned creating smooth animations in Scratch, and a big part of creating smooth animations is making sure you're not using this wait command. So typically when you are learning Scratch, what someone will tell you to do is say, they'll say like next costume, they'll say switch to next costume, but put in like a wait uh, 0.1 seconds, something like this. So maybe our idle animation would look like this. Uh, we wait 0.1 seconds and then it goes to the next one. And that slows her down, but you'll see, and that does create an animation, but it also makes her look really glitchy. And the thing is, even if you turn this number all the way down to zero, it still is a little bit scattered. That still doesn't look as smooth as it does when you take out this weight entirely and just put in the costume number like that. In the next video, we're going to create a backdrop and then have that backdrop actually move with our character. So the background moves, but our character stays still, as you see in most platforming games.